Um, we're going to shift things up here heading in this afternoon session, all right? So this morning we took you through kind of the hardware and the software architecture of the 8400. Um, but if you've, um, if you've been following the 8400 and AOSCX, we talk about it as being the first network operating system for operators. All right, so this, this next section is going to be about the network analytics engine. I'll let the, uh, my team introduce themselves. But what I would share with our viewers today is that in, over the, in the last six months, you know, well north of 100, hundreds, small hundreds of customer briefings on this product, at the point in the discussion with every level of potential customer, whether it's a network engineer or a CIO, at the point in the discussion when we get into NAE or network analytics engine, this is where things pivot because I think people realize this is a, a genuine new innovation um, in networking technology really centered around, again, the operator versus the developer of the product. So with, uh, without anything uh, additional to add, I'm going to pass it off to Charles and Scott. Let you guys introduce yourselves. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. I'm uh, Charles Clark. Uh, Ruba Fellow, and uh, Scott. Hi, I'm uh, Scott Coster. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Aruba. So what I wanted to do is first start off talking a little bit about root cause analysis and uh, what I mean by that. And so, you know, as a network operator, you're often faced with problems. And these problems come phased as things like, oh, the door lock's not working, or wireless, I can't connect to the wireless or um, uh, guests can't uh, connect to the network, those kinds of problems. And uh, you know, that's not actually the, the, uh, the thing that you need to fix, right? That's a symptom of the issue that you've got. And uh, you know, as you work through that, you're ultimately gonna get to the actual root cause of the problem. And that root cause is gonna be something like there's a bad transceiver you know, somewhere in the network or, there, or a cable mis uh, uh, miscabling, or maybe there's some kind of wireless interference, you know, some kind of root cause problem. And the challenge we face as network operators is how do we take those problems that come in from the help desk or, or, we, or through our monitoring and actually get down to the root cause of the problem so we can fix it and, and move on. And so it's this, it's this problem of getting from the, the, you know, the actual presented problem down to the root cause that we're, that we're addressing here. And you know, when these things happen, um, you know, people can be a little impatient sometimes. Uh, they expect things to work, and when they don't work, they, uh, they get a little irritated, right? And so as we're working on these problems, uh, well, time is of the essence. We need to get these things fixed as quickly as possible. I, I looked at some research and some surveys and, and uh, talked to people around, and I, and I came up with this kind of, you know, kind of histogram, if you will, of the times it takes to fix a problem from when it's reported to when actually that problem's resolved. How long does it take? It turns out about 20% uh, takes about an hour, within an hour or so. About 60% take about three hours. So we're talking about a fairly long amount of time for people to have networking issues. And then it tapers off from there and you've got problems that can linger for days, right, as you go on. And, and maybe, you know, everyone can think of uh, maybe the, the, the ones that hung out for a long time and, you know, you had to deal with them uh, uh, over a period of days uh, and were very hard to get to. Um, you know, and, and when you think about those kinds of problems that take a long time, oftentimes one of the issues uh, that we're faced with is that an error will occur and we're not actually physically present to see it, right? And maybe uh, there's some things that log messages, you know, and maybe there's a little something here or there that you can look at, but you don't really have enough information in order to really figure out what went wrong, right? A transient error, something that happened, you know, maybe it happened at 3 a.m. in the morning and then, you know, you. We had to get ourselves out of bed and get into work to look at it in detail and it's already five o'clock in the morning and that thing's gone, right? It's gone. And we're looking around trying to figure out what happened, um, you know, several hours before and try and resolve it. And so then, you know, we're gonna somehow instrument systems, maybe put up some packet captures, maybe start logging more additional information and hope that it happens again so we can see it and, uh, and get to the root cause, right? So this is a kind of another issue that we face uh, when we're trying to uh, um, resolve issues. Um, and, so, and so, you know, when we think about the process that we go through, you know, the, the thing that we need to do as we get these problems is that we need to start collecting information. We need to, you know, maybe we're doing some kind of, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, looking at uh, CLI command outputs or, you know, setting up packet traces and things like that. And in order to get for this problem down the resolution, we're gonna go collect information uh, and as we work through that, we're gonna come up with some hypothesis about what the problem is, right? And we're gonna test that hypothesis using data collected and finally get to the root cause of the problem. 
And when you think about this process, you know, this process, we kind of start with monitoring. We're watching for problems. Sometimes our help desk is our monitor and that they're alerting us that there's an issue. Um, but hopefully we also have instrumentation within the network that's giving us information about the status of the network. And we detect something's wrong. One of the first things we want to do is we want to determine whether there's some kind of service impact, right? Are our clients being affected by this problem? Or, um, or is it just something that's happening that's anomalous um, and whatnot? And then we want to move to collecting root cause information. We've got to collect some information and try and make sense of what's happening, uh, collect additional information in order for us to kind of, you know, get to the point where we understand uh, the root cause of the problem, uh, figure out how we're going to change it to resolve this problem, verify the correct operation, then move back to our monitoring uh, phase. So this is what we normally do. And you think about what you do when you, when you go through collecting information. You're getting on, you're, you're, you're SSHing to a box, and you're executing CLI show commands to look at status of things. Um, you're turning on logging, or maybe you're expecting, inspecting log files, uh, looking through those, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, you may be reviewing configuration files, looking and saying, you know, maybe there's something wrong with the config, let me look at it. Um, you may be doing, you know, more active uh, probing of uh, traceroute or pings or actual packet captures and looking at those, uh, those packets that are captured. Just backing up one level. Yeah. So this whole process helps me to work through a problem, but how have I first identified that there is a problem? Is there also some kind of automation here that tells me X is broken? And, uh, and then begins to work through this resolution process. Yeah, exactly. This monitoring process is key, right? Because you've got to detect the problem. And, and we, we, you know, as I mentioned, we have our help desk that's going to tell us that there's a problem, but that's what, like, way too late, right? We like to understand whether there's an issue long before that. And so, and so today, you know, what, what do you do? You know, you'll have tools, uh, management tools that are watching for, uh, you know, uh, interface counters, maybe thresholds on that. Uh, you know, the types of tools you had. And so, and so uh, actually, I'd like to hear from you, you know, what is it that, 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 the country, well, that's the question that you're relying am upon, I, right? Am I going in and defining baselines and deciding what thresholds I want to have a trigger event that says, oh, something's out of bounds here, or is there some sort of data analysis that goes through, kind of comes up with a normalization and baseline of what's typical for the network that it's operating in and then infers, okay, when I go out of bounds, there's an issue there. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so what I wanted to talk about next was really kind of what we're doing to solve this problem, which is using the network analytics engine, right, and this automated root cause analysis. And so what we've, our approach now is to see what portions of this we can automate. And actually, we've made some really good progress in terms of automating this process. And we're going to talk about monitoring and the other steps along the way. So I think we're going to talk exactly okay. what you're looking for, right? And so, and so let's dig actually right into what this network engine is. We keep talking about it and what, what is it? You know, what does it constitute? And so it's a facility that's within the switch. So this is built into the 8400 switch, right? I think, um, I think we talked about a little earlier about how it's, I'll give more details about, you know, how it fits into that architecture. But it's a facility there and this allows uh, a hosting of what we call agents. We'll talk a lot about what those agents are. In fact, we'll see some agents uh, later in the presentation. And these agents monitor for and trigger on anomalies. And we'll, we'll look at um, the kind of capabilities they have in terms of monitoring, the, you know, the type of monitoring they can do and the complex uh, um, uh, events that they can, they can detect. They then can automate the analysis, uh, service impact, and root cause. These agents have full access to the configuration of the switch. They have access to the protocol states and the network statistics. So if you watched our pre previous uh, sessions on the software, you know that what we're using is that REST interface into the, uh, into the internal database to get information uh, about the configuration and the state and also the AC counters uh, and things of that nature. There's a time series database uh, within, the, within the analytic engine. And so uh, values can be monitored and that time series data can be uh, collected. Um, and that uh, time series data that's collected is correlated with the configuration changes. So we've talked pre in previous sessions about the checkpoints, the configuration checkpoints. And so as configurations are made, those, are, those changes are correlated with that time series data. So you know when the configuration changed relative to the data that was collected. Um, the, Agents can also capture information from neighbor infrastructure and servers. And so they have the ability to uh, communicate over the network to maybe an adjacent switch 
and maybe do a rest call into that switch to see its perspective on the problem at the time that it sees an anomaly in the network operation. And, uh, and of course, they can communicate out. Uh, they can use uh, various means. They can, of course, publish uh, the fact that their status has changed. They've gone to a critical state. They could publish information that they've collected. And of course, we support things like legacy protocols, so it can also generate syslog messages uh, to integrate in with existing uh, management tools. Right? So this kind of, in a nutshell, is the network at a lake engine and how we're using it to uh, do root cause analysis. So the agents that can gather from neighbors, does that means they're hosted on the 8400 and then reaching out to those devices? And That's exactly right, yeah. So they're, 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 uh, these agents are scripts, actually, that are running uh, within the analytic engine uh, um, system, and they can have network access, so they can actually make arrest calls out to the neighboring systems. We'll see examples of that later on. Actually, I'll show you some examples of how we do that. In fact, we have a demo uh, and coming up in a little bit here that'll actually show examples of us doing exactly that. So let me, let me go uh, another run at this, because there was a lot of stuff on that slide. And so let me take another run at it, and we're going to go slightly a little more detail uh, about, the, uh, about the engine and about the uh, agents and how we're using it for uh, getting to root cause. Uh, the first thing is that these agents are scripts. Actually, they're Python scripts, turns out. Uh, but it, and, that, and it's a full Python environment, and so you can do you know, whatever, whatever you can do in Python, you can do within these scripts. But in addition to the Python language, you also have a, a module, uh, that uh, Python module, that you have access to within your Python, within your agent scripts, and this simplifies, greatly simplifies your ability to write um, an agent that uh, can monitor and, and get to root cause. And we'll see examples of those uh, methods and classes uh, that are available uh, for you to uh, to make it easier. We talked about the monitoring capabilities and all of that uh, that part, the access to the system uh, via the uh, REST interface into the uh, database. And we've talked about the time series data recording capability, which is a key part of the, uh, of the system. Uh, I think in previous sessions we mentioned a little bit about the uh, low system overhead and SANS block isolation. So this uh, analytic engine is uh, partitioned off from the rest of the system, so it can't affect the uh, routing protocols and things of that nature, right? So it's, it's contained. It has a CPU quota and RAM quotas and whatnot like that. Uh, but at the same time, it has uh, plenty of, uh, of uh, performance uh, uh, resources available to it to get its job done. The agents I mentioned are scripts. A key thing about this is that these agents aren't built in. There will be some that are pre-installed uh, in the product, uh, but you can upload new ones, uh, whatever you'd like. And, uh, and also these agents, because they're Python, uh, they're readable. You know, if you, if, you, if you understand Python, you could actually read the source code of it, and you may want to customize it and change it if, you, if it doesn't do, do exactly what you want. And uh, so we'll see examples of the scripts themselves later, and, and this may make more sense at that point. Do I have to run them on the 8400? Uh, today we're enabling them to, to run on the 8400. Um, because in theory, if they're just, you know, Python, I could run them remotely. I mean, what's the... What's the specific benefit I'm getting at running it right on that chassis? Is it because of access to the ASICs on the local box, or? There's a, there's a few benefits, there's a couple benefits, primarily on performance and scale, right? So, so there's an advantage to running locally in that, um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, you're not going across the network and retrieving information, right? Uh, the other aspect is if, if you lose connectivity, right, that agent may not be able to get his job done. And so that's one of the failure scenarios that we want to make sure we covered is that if that aggregation box doesn't have connectivity up to, up to your data center where your application... I don't have a gap in analytics data because I'm running right on the local box. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And we'll talk more about the solution. In Go ahead. Integration with Prometheus. The time series data. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. So we'll, I'll talk a little more about that, uh, about that issue a little later in the presentation. So I think we covered that the scripts are, uh, you, know, you just upload them, uh, new ones, and instantiate uh, instances of those. Um, within the scripts themselves, there's kind of a, a programming pattern uh, that, that we'll see in the example scripts, and it's a very powerful one, actually, that we all, I think, understand, and that is we have conditions and actions, and this is like the if this happens, then do these things, right? And the conditions, in our case, are, can be very expressive. And we're not talking about just, oh, gee, the number got below 80, uh, let's do something. It could be very complicated in terms of looking at, at, at correlating different um, uh, uh, 
uh, um, conditions within the system and determining, uh, you know, through a complex analysis when a condition uh, is, is true when it's fired. And then there's a, a powerful set of actions that we have available uh, within these agents to, uh, to get the things done. And primarily the task of these agents are to determine service impact and to help determine the root cause of the problem, of the anomaly. And then finally, um, of course, there's a REST interface into all of this. And so not only can you load agents and check the status of the agent via the REST interface, um, but also because it's stored in the database, uh, but also these agents, when, they are in, uh, when they're loaded onto the system, they, uh, there's a uh, REST interface automatically generated for that agent. So you have access to, if that agent has parameters that could be set, for example, a REST interface is automatically generated for that agent. So you can remotely manage that agent also via the REST interface. And we also generate, auto-generate a web UI for each of these agents. They're just Python scripts, but we introspect, we look into that script and generate a web interface for that script automatically. And so when you go to the web UI of 8400, you'll actually see a web page there uh, for, for your script that you've added there. And that web UI, of course, just uses the REST interface in order to get access to the information about the agent.